Welcome back to Crit Cracks MTG. I'm Crit, and today we're going to be cracking a box of Modern Horizons 2, a set booster box today. Uh, this break went a little bit slower than I wanted it to, so I've sped up the video here so we can keep it to a reasonable time. Thank you again for joining me. Uh, we've got 30 set boosters here that we're going to go through. Actually, 29. One of these, as you'll see here soon, I've reserved for a winner from my first video. Uh, I gave away a set booster pack to Dan. So you can take a look on my YouTube channel. You can see that opening. It's a nice short clip. But let's get to the packs here. I promise if you stick around till the end of this one, you won't be disappointed in this box. Uh, the pulls here ended up being fantastic. So keep watching. Particularly if you like fetch lands, we're going to get some fetchies. Started off with a foil mountain. And here we go with our first rare. We've got a General Ferris Rockerick and into a Solitary Confinement. All right, it's not a fantastic first pack. Let's keep going, see what else we get here. And we've got a list card, a Wayfarer's Bobble. As you can see, I've included the prices here. These prices are from the TCG Player app. And these are obviously prices that are fluctuating. I've taken these uh, just on the day that I did the editing. So obviously some of these prices, uh, they should be in the ballpark as you're watching this video. But of course, these can change. All right, our next rare, we've got a Dress Down. Milliken. And another list card, a Shell Dock Isle. Not a bad pull here. I haven't paid too much attention uh, to the list cards themselves. Uh, so every time I come across one, it's always a bit of a surprise. I don't really know what to expect. I, I don't know which cards are part of the list. Uh, it's not really something I've been looking at too much. But like I said, it's always a, a pleasure to see a, a card that you're not expecting. All right, into an Obsidian Charmaw. This one seems to be getting a decent amount of play. Angelic Curator. We've got a Sketch Phantasmal. Not too much great out of these packs so far. Let's see what we get. Got a Captain Ripley, Thraben Watcher, Flame Tongue Yearling, Flame Blitz, Flay Essence. Into the rare is a Dermotaxi and a Wonder. And a Late to Dinner Sketch. Followed by a Persist Foil in the Retro Frame. All right, not, not a bad hit so far. Nothing fantastic. A few packs in. We're definitely wanting more. Let me know what you think of this video, the sped up, uh, sped up video with the audio recorded over top. Um, if it helps me keep the video shorter, then I can keep doing this. It, maybe it loses a little bit of its, its charm with uh, the immediate reactions, but uh, we'll see. Let me know what you guys think. How have you, been, you guys been finding Modern Horizons 2? Have you had a chance to get out to any events, any drafts, or any sealed events? We got a Magus of the Bridge. Love the artwork on that card. Galvanic Relay in the retro frame. I made it out to a single event a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a sealed event for the pre-release, and I had a ton of fun. Uh, if you saw 
one of my previous videos. I did a deck build from a pre-release kit. Give that one a watch if you're interested in uh, deck building for a sealed event. We got a Timeless Dragon in the retro frame, and there we go, our first fetch land, a Misty Rainforest. Uh, in terms of value, that's the top seller. Misty Rainforest is, is getting the most amount of money right now. Karmic Guide as a third rare, a three rare pack, not too bad at all. And then a sketch card, followed by a foil bridge. Those pull tabs, I've been struggling with those, but I'm trying to make them work. Yavamaya. All right, let's, let's keep hunting for these fetchies. After the uncommons here, we've got a Cauldra Complete. This is a living weapon with indestructible. It pretty much gives a creature any keyword you want it to have. It's fantastic. Plus five, plus five. The only issue, though, is that price. Seven drop to cast it, as well as another seven to equip. So if you can find a way around that, if, if you've got a card that can immediately equip um, or to cast a, to cast an artifact maybe without paying its cost uh, that would really help that caldra complete okay we got an ignoble hierarch another great card um, I would argue that card might be a little undervalued at the moment um, simply because it the the market got a little flooded with them with this uh, printing in Modern Horizons 2. We got another list card, Time of Ice, Saga. Uh, but that ignoble Hierarch, uh, you would expect it to be around the same value of the Noble Hierarch. All right, next pack, we got a Timeless Dragon again. And our second fetch, a Marsh Flats. That is the least valuable uh, of the five fetches but we'll take it. We'll take what we can get. Let's keep going. We've got two fetches so far. We've got a single um, Mythic with the Caldra Complete. Let's get some more. I want more Mythics here. All right, we've got a Priest of Fell Rites. And another List card. Into the next pack. We're about a third of the way through. Abundant Harvest. Search the premises for our first rare. And another Misty Rainforest. If you look closely, that one is foil. $50 value at the time of editing. Uh, we'll take it. That is, that's fantastic. Give me more of those foil fetches. So we're at three fetches so far. Double Misty Rainforest. We've got a single Mythic. Okay, a Nettle Cyst. Not bad. Grist the Hunger Tide. There we go, our second Mythic. Got a Soul Snare. And a Retro Step Through. Primal Vigor as a list card. Um, when I first opened that up, I, I'll be honest, I had no idea the value of that card. Um, I wasn't sure if that was a, a dollar rare or a, a $50 rare. Um, like I said, I'm uh, a new player, not really sure what the list cards are, but a Primal Vigor is fantastic. Ornithopter of Paradise in that retro frame looking cool. Oh, and that one threw me. I thought we had another foil Misty, but wasn't meant to be. Let me know what you think of the pricing here. Again, I'm using the TCG Player app to get all these prices. We got a Sithis Harvest Hand and a Cursed Totem. That's not a bad pull. 
Very playable card. Gorilla Shaman. It seems crazy. We're already getting close to the release of uh, the D&D &D set, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Um, I'm looking forward to it. What do you guys think? Is there... What do you think of these new mechanics? The dungeons, um, the classes that you can level up, uh, the rolling a d20 uh, for some of the cards to see what you get. Uh, I kind of like the flavor of it. I'm glad that they're they're incorporating some of that D&D &D feel uh, rather than just throwing in the characters uh, that you recognize. We got a Harmonic Prodigy. And a Karth the Lion. Speaking of rolling the D20, oh, I've seen such a debate online about the D20 versus the spin down counter. What what do you guys think? Do you mind if the player across the table from you rolls a spin down counter instead of an actual D20? I think it's pretty clear that the the spin down is not made to be rolled uh you know i've heard some things like oh the the manufacturing is really not meant to be fair for those those spin down counters right it doesn't have the same stringent quality uh quality control that an actual d20 has well if you if you've wow another fetch a scalding tarn my position here if you're worried about the role of uh, a spin-down counter, uh, you're probably taking the game a little bit more seriously than I am. That's cool. Uh, I'm in it to have fun. The, the quality control on most dice, honestly, is probably not good enough um, to really make them fair. I spent quite a few years playing competitive X-Wing, and the, the dice that were manufactured for that game where where you ideally want those to be uh, as fair as possible. They all had air bubbles in them at different spots. Um, I can't speak for all of D20s and D&D uh, &D dice in general, but it, uh, it takes a lot of work. We've got another fetch of Verdant Catacombs. This is number five. Uh, we've almost got a full set of them, too. Uh, I can't remember which one, which we're missing at this point. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, those dice for the most part, unless you're spending a lot of money on them, are probably not uh, being manufactured in a, a way that is totally fair and balanced anyways. But I recognize that some people will, will want to just stick to the actual D20s to roll, and that's cool. Myself, I don't care. We got a Mog Salvage, Abundant Harvest, Abiding Grace. My thoughts on the dungeon cards? Uh, they look all right. Uh, I guess they're similar to Sagas, but you have to uh, trigger an ability in, in order to advance to the next room in the dungeon. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to play around with it once the set comes out a little bit until I really formulate an opinion. Um, I'm not really sure how many of those cards have that venture into the dungeon mechanic, uh, but I've seen a few of them. Okay, we got another mythic here, Sema's, Sarah's Emissary. And another rare... Uh, Narin, Narinarhal's Disc. I do really like the upcoming mechanic of uh, the classes that you can level up throughout the game. Um, I'm always a sucker for, a, for level up abilities uh, in any kind of game that I'm playing. So uh, I'm all in for that one. We got a Piru the Volatile and the Retro Frame. And the foil treatment, uh, this card really looks great. Um, I couldn't really tell if the foiling was on the actual image and the text box or not. It doesn't look like it. And I, I like that idea 
of that foiling all only being on the frame. All right, what do we got in this one? We got a diamond lion and an arid mesa. That is fetch number six. Count them up. That completes our set. We have one of each, as well as that sixth one being the misty rainforest uh, foil. So we've got one of each of the regular fetch lands plus an extra foil misty rainforest. This is turning out to be a great box. Got a chef's kiss. Crack open. We got a couple packs left. But everything from here on out is honestly just gravy. We've we've gotten six fetches. Uh, that alone has has value that pays for the box, or at least coming close to paying for the box. Uh, I'm not a super competitive player here. Um, I'll probably end up selling these fetches. Uh, the one I might put into a deck is the Marsh Flats. I play a lot of black and white. Uh, but the other color combinations, uh, I might rather sell those and turn that money into another box. We'll see. Okay, that was our last pack, going through the Mythics. Caldra Complete, I was really happy to grab. I've been looking for that card. And then here are the fetches, what we're all looking for. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Here's the total value. Uh, give this video a like, I'd appreciate it.